Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Hello and welcome to another standard games video. Today we're taking a look at a red white spirit tribal deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. And the deck features a ton of new cards from Strixhaven, including Hoffrey Ghostforge, the only non spirit creature in the deck but still synergizes very well with spirits, as a 5 mana 4 5 legendary dwarf cleric, giving spirits we control plus 1 plus 1 trample and haste, so it has an immediate impact when it comes into play and will give our future spirits haste as well. And whenever another non token creature we control dies, we add Exile it, and if we do create a token that's a copy of that creature, except it's a spirit in addition to its other types, and when this creature leaves the battlefield, we return the exiled card to our graveyard, so it can give our creatures a second lease on life. Then we also have the full playset of Venerable Warsinger, a 3 mana 3 3 spirit cleric with vigilance and trample, and whenever the Warsinger deals combat damage to a player, we may return target creature card with mana value X or less from our graveyard to the battlefield, where X is the amount of damage Warsinger dealt to that player, so it can potentially get some creatures back from the graveyard. Then we also have the full playset of Blood Age General, a 2 mana 2 2 spirit warrior, that can tap to give attacking spirits plus 1 plus 0 until end of turn. So if the ground gets a little bit stalled, we can maybe tap the general instead of attacking with it, to maybe pump our evasive spirit tokens we get from Clarion Spirit, also very synergistic with our Warsinger. And then a Rally the Ranks is another great payoff card for the deck. A 2 mana enchantment that as it enters the battlefield we choose a creature type, which is going to be Spirit in our case, and creatures we control of the chosen type get plus 1 plus 1, so a very cheap and powerful anthem effect for the deck. Then taking a look at the rest of the deck, at 1 mana we've got the full playset of Stonebinders Familiar, a 1 mana 1-1 one, one spirit dog, saying whenever one or more cards are put into exile during our turn, we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on the familiar, and this ability triggers only once each turn. And you would be surprised at how many ways we have of exiling cards that don't involve messing with our graveyard, so we actually have the full playset of Skyclave Apparition as a nice spirit that's also a removal spell that can exile an opposing permanent, which will trigger familiar. We also have Showdown of the Skulls, which can provide card advantage, which will also exile cards with the first chapter, so those are some easy ways to enable the Stonebinders Familiar, and then Hoffrey Ghostforge can also potentially enable it. And then we also have the full playset of Usher of the Fallen as a 1 mana 2 1 Spirit Warrior with Boast for 1 and white, creating a 1 1 white Human Warrior creature token if we attacked with Usher. Then at 2 mana, we've already covered Blood Age General and to Rally the Ranks. And then we also have the full playset of Clarion Spirit as one of the more powerful creatures in the deck. A 2 2 saying whenever we cast our second spell each turn, we get to make a 1 1 white Spirit creature token with Flying. So those are very synergistic in our deck as well, since they'll help us go wide and make use of all those extra anthem effects like Rally the Ranks and Blood Age General. Then at 3 mana, besides Warsinger, we've got the full playset of Skyclave Apparition. Probably doesn't need an introduction, but just a powerful removal spell in creature form that also happens to be a spirit and also enables our Stonebinders familiar. Then at 4 mana, we've got our full playset of Showdown of the Skulls as a great card draw engine. Usually want to play it as our last card, so we have as much mana as possible in play to make use of those abilities, since on the first chapter we exile the top 4 cards of our library, and until the end of our next turn we may play those cards, so we want to make sure we can cast all those cards before they go away. And then on the second and third chapters, whenever we cast a spell this turn, we can put a plus one plus one counter on target creature we control, so that can also add up and represent a ton of extra damage. And then top of our curve at 5 mana, besides our two copies of Hoffrey, we also have two copies of Lorehold Command as a very versatile instant that lets us choose two modes between making a 3-2 red and white spirit creature token. Creatures we control get plus one plus so, gain indestructible and haste until end of turn. We can deal 3 damage to any target and target player gains 3 life, and we can sacrifice a permanent to draw 2, so that can potentially sacrifice a land or maybe showdown of the skulls before it goes away to still get a bit of value. And then our mana base, very straightforward, 10 basic planes, 6 basic mountains, to make sure we have plenty of lands to reveal to our Fury Claim Snarl, and then 4 of the red-white pathway. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, with a nice opening hand, get to curve 1, 2, 3, and then refuel with Showdown of the Skulls, which will also enable our Stonebinders familiar. Probably gonna need double white more than double reds. Facing a Gigantha, the Wellspring deck. So, not exactly sure what we're up against. Player General, hit for one. And hope to hit our fourth line drop. Serpent Blue Red. 
and uh, yeah, we're just gonna attack and then play our War Singer afterwards. Could see removal on the general, but hopefully War Singer will be able to get him back. Into the Royal will bounce the general instead. Still play War Singer here. And then, depending on what we draw, we could replay general, we could play showdown. As we see Riel, the Everwise. Well, I wouldn't mind finding a Skyclave Apparition with Showdown, so we can exile Riel next turn. The only downside is that I've already played a land for the turn, so if we exile multiple lands with Showdown, we won't be able to make use of it. So maybe the play is to just play another Warsinger here, hit for three. And then next turn play Showdown, maybe still play one drop afterwards. Is their opponent playing some sort of discard spells deck with Thrill of Possibility, discarding Negate? Would have been effective against Showdown. And they tapped Kazul's Fury, which can also be very strong in combination with Riel. We're not gonna draw into anything that really is going to affect combat too much. Uh, even Pumping Familiar by playing Showdown is not gonna let it attack here, so I think we just start by sending in the two Warsingers and take it from there. Can't keep up Lorehold command since the Snarl comes into play tapped, as it usually does. So opponent takes it, nothing to get back, and then... Yeah, I think I'm okay playing Showdown here. And then we still get to play Usher. Opponents at 9, so they'll need some sort of sweeper. Blitz cleanly takes care of Warsinger, exiles it as well. Times 2, so we won't be able to get those back. Alright, so I can play my Snarl Revealing Planes, have access to 6 mana, which is not enough to play both, but getting the showdown in play seems more important. And then we'll be able to pump Familiar, so I'll probably put the counter on Usher so that can attack as well. Do also have the Lorehold command, so does that kill the opponent here if we go for it? We can deal 3 to Rial to get that out of the way, pump our creatures. Still a little bit short, but it is worth considering. I think we still get the value from Showdown while we can. And then counter here. And both Clarion Spirit and Rally the ranks are pretty strong here. So if I play Rally, put a counter somewhere, we essentially force the opponent to block since we're representing 9 damage. So I think that's better than going for a Spirit here. And then we'll put the counter on the card we most want the opponent to trade for, which in this case it's probably the familiar, since Usher might have more value making some tokens. Name Spirits. And attack. Opponent's gonna trade, take four. And then next turn we can potentially go Clarion Spirit plus General, make a Spirit token. It's gonna be double removal on Usher. We'll get the Snarl in play. Play Clarion Spirits. Sadly, the counters go to waste. Now I could play Lorehold Command. That will trigger Clarion Spirits. And then we can choose the mode giving our creatures plus one plus so indestructible and haste. And that could kill the opponent. The only concern is a negate, which our opponent has shown us before. And I don't really feel the need to play into a negate here. So let's just go for general. And then we can maybe use commands to sacrifice Shodan of the Skulls with a third chapter on the stack, so we don't even have to sacrifice a land to draw two cards. But if the opponent doesn't have a sweeper, they're probably just dead. 
their opponent discarded a bunch of cards. And yeah, opponent concedes, so seeing the power of showdown of the Skulls more than anything, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Turn 1, Usher. Turn 2, we can either boast or play Familiar. And then Familiar will get pumped by Showdown. Well, let's see what we're up against. Turn 1, Swamp. Yeah, I think I'm into the idea of boasting here. on black green with a wither bloom apprentice can send with the usher our opponent might have taken the damage from the human warriors since the apprentice is so valuable to them but didn't really feel like uh, taking the risk so waiting an extra turn on showdown is reasonable since we'll Get more mana to leverage the extra cards, and then for now Clarion Spirit plus Familiar, and then I'm okay sending the War Singer. These two get to attack. Opponent takes it. And then hopefully Showdown can find maybe Hoffrey to give our team Trample. Or some removal for the Sedgemore Witch, either a Skyclave Apparition or a Lorehold Command. A reason to hold the basic lands in hand as opposed to Pathway is if we draw the Snarl. But now that we drew Mountain, it's not a concern anymore. So let's showdown. Opponent pass with 4 mana up, so either sitting or removal or maybe some instant speed sacrifice effects. Or both. Can we plumb the forbidden just cycled? Makes a pest. And Mortality Spear kills Clarion Spirit. Fair enough. Can maybe get it back with a War Singer. And there's Hoffrey for next turn, so we found all the cards we were hoping for. So if War Singer attacks, it could get back Clarion Spirits before I play my second spell for the turn. Yeah, let's send War Singer, Familiar, and Spirit Token. And we'll see if they let the War Singer connect. And they're gonna trade. Still fine to kill the Witherbloom Apprentice here. Play Familiar. And then next turn. We have to decide between Hoffrey and Apparition. Hoffrey is more impactful, although exiling the Witch could be key. Alright, one splashing red, maybe for Corvold, who knows? Maybe they're playing Claim the Firstborn, plus their sacrifice effects to kill whatever they steal. It's gonna be a Croxa. Can have my land. And maybe a sacrifice effect or response. Suppose keeping pathway leaves up the possibility of casting double apparition if we draw one. Although keeping mountain for future snarls could also matter. Right, another plum. Sir opponent does get to make a lot of pests, but Hoffrey gives her team trample. So that's maybe all we need here to get across the finish line. Let's pump maybe the Usher of the Fallen. Attack with the team. So the Satchmore Witch is going to have to block. And more than just a 1 1 token. And once a familiar trades, we get it back with Hoffrey. And that's also going to pump the other familiar. Alright, so they're gonna trade for both. Bone falls to one. 
and the familiars come back. So we get to pump one of them. And then opponent could potentially escape Croxa, so probably worth it to keep land in hand. So we can play Hasty General. And that can pump the team once again by just tapping right away. And our opponent concedes. Hoffrey just applied too much pressure. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. This hand seems a little too expensive with double Hoffrey and only two lanes. This is better. And then probably ditch the familiar, which doesn't have any XL effects to go with it. So we get to curve Usher into Spirit into Warsinger. And I guess a clever Lumamancer deck, we're gonna need our Skyclave Apparitions for interaction. Although going wide with a bunch of Spirit tokens from Clarion Spirit could also get there. So they're playing the blue-white version, and they have their own Clarion Spirit. Lorehold Command will eventually be an answer. I'm okay attacking. Keeping my mountain in hand in case we find Snarls later. At least the blue-white version doesn't have much removal, so they're unlikely to get rid of our Clarion Spirits. So those will be able to keep generating tokens. So opponent's got a planes up. So will probably just be a trade if they have a defined strike here, but don't really want to trade. Or a fighter's one, also a reason not to block. So we're down to 12. Symmetry Sage can kind of add on to the Lumamancer to deal to extra damage. And Familiar was an excellent draw, since now we can go Spirit into Familiar. And actually, don't mind trading Usher for a Spirit token. Still have Warsinger to maybe get it back. Alright, if we can dodge a Leonin Lightscribe, I'll be happy. Well, there it is. One card left in hand. Opponent sends the team. Alright, so assuming this is, let's say, a show of confidence, as a plus one counter enables Magecraft. Could be another fight as one. So it's unlikely to work out if I try and block here. So we might be better off just letting damage happen, assuming we don't die. If they have a spell, let's see. 2, 4, 5, 6, 7... 8, 9, 10, 11. I guess we have to block at least one creature. So maybe block the Lumamancer. That forces them to cast a spell, and then I shouldn't be dead. But we also don't throw away our entire board. Alright, they had another fight as one, so blocking was not going to work out. So we're at 2. And if the opponent draws any ways to enable Magecraft, we're probably dead. For now, just play Warsinger. And pass a turn. Alright, opponent passes, we get to play Showdown, and then we get to survive one more turn. To then uh, play Lorehold Command to kill Lightscribe. And then, do we attack with a Warsinger? I think we do. I'm happy if it trades, and I'm happy if it gets back a creature. It does trample, so not a great block from the Lumamancer. And now we get to pump our familiar. So we're still in a precarious position, because if the opponent finds a spell, we're dead to the flyers. So need to dodge an instant or sorcery, although... Our showdown of the skulls hasn't really delivered. Alright, so now we can play Lorehold Command. And that can kill the Light Scribe, plus could consider sacrificing showdown of the skulls or just a land. Since we'll still be able to get a plus one counter from showdown next turn if we play general. How aggressive do we get is a question. 
can definitely tank with Warsinger. Wouldn't be able to trigger double Clarion Spirit, unfortunately. So let's say we tank with Warsinger. Could also use the mode that pumps our team. Would that get us close to lethal? If we tank with everyone. Yeah, maybe that's actually worth it here. And then we either pump the team or... Could also maybe go face with the three damage if that gives us lethal. Alright, so currently have five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, plus three to the face is lethal, so... Pump team, three face. And put the counter here. Alright, probably could have gotten away with killing the Lion's Crime 2 here, but didn't really matter. So, close game, if our opponent drew any instant or sorcery there, we would have been dead to the Lion's Crime, but managed to dodge a bullet there. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a reasonable hand. Get to curve 1, 2, 3, and then a Hoffrey is a nice curve topper eventually. Facing a Black Lurus deck, this is probably going to be a tough matchup. This is typically a deck with lots of cheap removal and enchantment form. Combined with Hateful Eidolon, so if we can dodge Hateful Eidolon that would be nice. If they kill Familiar in general we don't really mind since we have Warsinger to get them back. Don't really want to block Vessel when they can Malaka rebirth it back into a 5-5 Demon. And rally the ranks to draw. Yeah, we'll play General. Keep Mountain in hand for Snarl. And then, probably going to play Warsinger before we rally, although if we're afraid of a uh, minus three enchantments, then maybe playing rally first is better. Sadly, there's the Hateful Eidolon, so... Let's see, Vessel attacked. They might be planning to sack it, or they have a Mogus' favor to give this minus one toughness if we block. Yeah, Malika Rebirth is kind of my primary concern here. Alright, second war singer probably means I can run out the first one before rally. And then do we have any attacks? Could attack with familiar and then pump it with general. And a trade is okay since we have a war singer to maybe get them back. So hopefully no Myers Grasp in our future. Opponent on taps. Puts Lurus in hand, so that can eventually get back Scorpion. And plays another one. Alrighty, so... If I play Rally, they cannot block my Warsinger. Although that would be my entire turn gone but it would get back familiar. Waiting on showdowns, fine, so I could also just play another Warsinger first. The problem with attacking with a Warsinger is that they can just jump with a Vessel to get it in the graveyard to then make a 5-5 Demon with Lurus. So, I kind of like just playing another Warsinger here. And then passing. And then next turn we can showdown and still play land for the turn, or we could wait... Right, dead weight kills general, that's fine. Triggers Eidolon. And then we might see Lurus get back Scorpion. Right, opponent keeps up one mana. So they might have that Malachi Rebirth to protect our Lurus. Found a Skyclave Apparition, that one gets around Malachi Rebirth. So we can exile Lurus, which is a pretty big deal. Just a village rise to draw two. Does prevent it from getting exiled, which can matter in the matchup. Right, triple block means 
I don't have to kill the vessel. If her opponent has Call of the Death Dweller, they can get back Lurus and then get back Archfiend's vessel, which would be problematic. So I could just kill the Eidolon and that's it. And then Warsinger can get back one of our spirits. And I think we just get back another Warsinger here. So let's see if they have a Call of the Death Dweller. Just a village right sacking the Disciple, so they didn't seem to have a Malachi Rebirth. Plays another Vessel. And a dead weight to shrink down the Warsinger. Alrighty, we can double spell Rally plus General, which seems decent. So we'll play Rally. Send a team. Opponent just takes it. Get back both our creatures. And our opponent's pretty far behind now. Land 5 gives us Hoffrey, which tramples the entire team. And our opponent explodes, so yeah, they were missing like one key card to get back their lures and then maybe kickstart their engine again. And we managed to dodge the Myers Grasp. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a keepable hand, assuming we can pick up a land 3. Warsinger plays particularly well with Anthem effects. Facing the Black Green Sacrifice deck with the Gigantha as companion. So turn two. Probably still play General, and then turn three, Apparition can also pump Familiar. Maybe Exile Apprentice, or maybe they'll have the three mana Witch here, which we can get rid of. Bastion of Remembrance, also a good one to Exile. It's gonna be a second Apprentice. Could see a Village Rites in response, which would also prevent me from pumping my Familiar. But doesn't seem to be the case. And then I'm okay with the trade. Alright, next turn we could double Rally, which is gonna increase our damage significantly. Or we could get our Warsinger in play first. But it's just gonna cycle Plum the Forbidden. And hunt for specimens to make a 1 1 pest. Another rally. I kind of like getting the Warsinger in play since it tramples, so the pests won't be as effective against it. And then I think we just send a team. We're fine with one of our creatures trading since we can always get them back. Opponent takes it, so we'll play Warsinger. So they've got Summoning, Forest, and one Unknown in hand. Opponent passes, picked up another General, so the question is, do we need to play Double Rally, or do we go Rally plus General? Let's start here. See if there's a response, there isn't. So we've got a 4-4 Warsinger, which would currently trade for Apprentice and two tokens. If we make it a 5-5, they won't necessarily be able to trade unless they're willing to throw away their entire board. Could also keep the Warsinger back this turn, and then just play General and then next turn double Rally, and then I'm okay trading any of the other creatures at the moment. So this might be a triple chum plus plum to draw a few cards. So 
So that's the card they needed, but our opponent's still very far behind on board. Especially once we factor in double rally next turn. Passion of Remembrance into another hunt for specimens. Alright, another pass summoning here generates more blockers, and now with Bastion they can actually start draining us while they chum block. So would love something like a Lorehold command to deal with Apprentice, or Hoffrey to give our creatures trample, although we'll still need land 5. Another Skyclave Apparition for Bastion would also be great. Opponent runs out Volantin, Dean of the Vein, and a Showdown of the Skulls. Showdown's tempting, I think we still double Rally. Send in the team. And expect to see some chum blocks. Warsinger tramples, so that one's gonna go through. Sir points at ten, we're at nine. Can they make enough chum blockers to survive? Pass summoning puts us to eight. Still one unknown card in hand. Could see them put Jigantha in hand too if they've got nothing else. And there's Hoffrey. Sadly, no fifth land to get the trample effect here. So might as well showdown. And we can still play Usher. So we did pick up Lorehold Command as well, so we've got a ton of options here. So how do we lose? If I attack with everyone, our opponents can jump three of our creatures, take 11, so they would be dead if they don't have anything. But since they didn't put Gigant in hand, we have to assume they've got something in hand. So... I think we still go for it. As opposed to like maybe just attacking with Warsinger or staying back for a turn to set up an attack once we have Hoffrey in play. But if we can force him to lose the Apprentice, that would be great. Oof, another Plum the Forbidden. That's bad news. So we're down to five. Down to three. But I guess her opponent's still dead. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. Uh, no double white. So we're just curving familiar into double general for now. We'll try it. It's definitely on the low end of keepable. But we've got lands and spells and... If we draw any of our Anthem effects, great. If we draw Planes for Apparition, great. Let's see what we're up against. Turn one Planes. Black Whites. Maybe a Magecraft deck. Heartless Act kills Familiar before it could pick up any counters, and there's my double white, although probably just gonna play another general for now. Second Heartless Act takes out general. Yeah, don't really want to play Apparition just as a 2-2 here. Soldiers pass. Right, Patricia and I don't mind exiling. I 
showdown perfect way to refuel. And can even sacrifice the enchantment to our Lorehold command to draw two. So we're putting to Black White's life gain deck. See Revitalize cycled. Another Lorehold command. Yeah, let's start with Showdown Keep of White Mana. Alright, and can still play Clarion Spirits. And Hoffrey Ghostforge also looking nice. So if we draw land, we can still play everything. Hoffrey giving our spirits haste means we could go Clarion Spirit into Hoffrey, make two spirit tokens, and they all get a plus one haste and trample bonus. Baneslayer Angel's not a bad one, though. Still gonna go with our plan of Spirit plus Hoffrey. And then what do we pump up? Maybe spread around our counters on our Clarion Spirit so they don't die to another Heartless Act. If we attack with everyone, do we kill them? Blocks Clarion Spirit up to 17, 8... Plus 6, 14. So, if instead we pump with a general, tank with everyone, block up to 17, 7, 11, plus 4, 15. So, not quite. So, I think we just chill, and then next turn we should be able to get there with a the Lorehold command. And then I can cast commands in response to the third chapter to sacrifice and draw two. Face Feathers puts Zippo into 16. Although we've got a lot of options here. So, in response to Showdown, I kind of like the idea of uh, pumping and then sacrificing just to kind of see that interaction. Sacrifice Showdown. And then we'll play Rally. And put counter on Hoffrey. Name Spirits. And that should do it. Well, this is a deck once it starts going off. Unexpected Fangs on Baneslayer Angel. Probably not gonna make the difference. So maybe not the most competitive matchup here in our final game, but it was pretty cool to see Hoffrey and Clarion Spirits in action. So yeah, overall, Red-White Spirits definitely played better than expected. Got to see the Warsinger do some good stuff, Hoffrey, and then of course Showdown of the Skulls is going to be kind of the glue that holds all these Red-White decks together. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.